Welcome back to the Parasitology Lecture Series. The topic for today is liver flukes. When discussing liver flukes, we focus on the two major classifications, Pasciola group and Clonorchis opistorchis group. Liver flukes are found worldwide. Over the years, liver fluke infections have been increasing partly due to changing agricultural practices and global trade. The second group of liver flukes includes Clonorchis and Opistorchis species. The most common species of Clonorchis is Clonorchis sinensis, or the oriental liver fluke, while Opistorchis viverini, also called the Southeast Asian liver fluke, is also frequently discussed in relation to human infection. In recent years, there has been increased recognition of other Opistorchis species, such as Opistorchis filinius or the cat liver fluke, which can cause similar clinical manifestations but is less common. This discussion will focus mainly on Clonorchis sinensis and Opistorchis viverini. Clonorchis sinensis is about 1 to 2.5 centimeters long and half a centimeter wide, making it smaller than your fasciola species. Obistorchis viverini, on the other hand, is slightly smaller than Clonorchis sinensis and its adult form can be about half the size of Clonorchis. A distinct differentiating feature between the two species are the posteriorly located testes. Clonorchis has tandem, highly branched testes, while Obistorchis has obliquely arranged, low bait testes. Clonorchis is more often seen in China, Taiwan, Vietnam, Russia, and even some parts of Korea. Obistorchis viverini is seen in Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and most importantly, Thailand, where opistorchiasis has been one of the most common helminth infections there. These infections are more common in parts of these countries that are closest to the Mekong River where some villages even report up to 67% prevalence. The life cycle of Clonorchis sinensis and Opistorchis viverini is very similar and involves two important intermediate hosts. The infection begins when humans ingest the infective stage, the metasarcariae, through the consumption of contaminated freshwater fish. Carps and minnows are the most common freshwater fish hosts. Once ingested, the metasarcaria exist in the duodenum and the larvae migrate through the biliary tract through the ampulla of water. Their migration bypass the liver parenchyma and the worms fully mature within the biliary ducts. Once the adult flukes reach sexual maturity, they begin releasing embryonated eggs which are passed through the human stool. These embryonated eggs are ingested by the first intermediate host, the fresh water snail, usually of the genus Parafosarulus. Inside the snails, they undergo several developmental changes until they become a cercaria. From the snail, the cercaria are released into the water and swim until they find their second intermediate host, the freshwater fish, where they insist as metasarcariae within the muscles or under the scales, and then the life cycle resets. Humans and other carnivores, such as dogs and cats, are the definitive hosts. Snails serve as the first intermediate host, while freshwater fish of the family Cyprinidae are the second intermediate host. Molecular techniques have revealed that freshwater goldfish, or Carassius auratus, a commonly overlooked host, can also harbor Clonorchis and Opistorchis larvae, which could further increase the risk of human infections. Omnivores, such as pigs and other domesticated animals, have been identified as reservoir hosts in some areas, contributing to the persistence of the parasite in human populations. The symptoms of Clonorchis and Opistorchis infections can be divided into two phases, the acute larval migration phase and the chronic adult phase. During the acute phase, 
the larvae migrate to the biliary tract, but unlike fasciola, they do not penetrate the intestinal mucosa and the liver parenchyma. The immune response during migration is less intense, leading to more subtle symptoms such as mild abdominal pain, low-grade fever, and even mild eosinophilia. In some individuals, the acute phase can actually be subclinical and symptoms are only recognized after the chronic phase develops. During the chronic phase, the adult fluke resides within the biliary tract, leading to more serious issues including intermittent biliary obstruction, cholecystitis or inflammation of the gallbladder, cholestasis or bile flow obstruction, and hepatomegaly. In severe cases, the chronic inflammation can lead to fibrosis and cirrhosis of the liver. It has been established that long-term chronic infections can directly lead to cholangiocarcinoma or cancer of the biliary ducts. About 10% of people with these chronic infections will develop cholangiocarcinoma. Multiple studies have already confirmed the direct link between chronic opistorchis and clonorchis infections and the development of periductal fibrosis and cholangiocarcinoma. The chronic migration, feeding, and attachment using the suckers of the adult worms produce chronic inflammation within the biliary ducts. Chronic inflammation caused by the parasites lead to severe hyperplasia of the cholangiocytes that line the biliary tree. Metaplasia of these epithelial cells then occur, eventually progressing to fibrosis, DNA damage, and carcinogenesis in the biliary tract. The metabolic excretory and secretory products of these flukes are also theorized to be immunogenic, toxic, and even mitogenic. One such excretory-secretory product is the Opistorchis viverini granulin, a growth factor which promotes self-proliferation and is secreted from the parasite's gut and tegument. This cancer is of public health significance, particularly in regions where these flukes are highly endemic. Northeastern Thailand continues to report the highest rates of cholangiocarcinoma, largely attributed to the widespread consumption of raw fish contaminated with these liver flukes. In Thailand, the most common delicacies involving these raw fishes include koi pla or raw fish salad, pla som, and pla ra, both of which are types of fermented fish. Diagnosis of clonorchisinensis and opistorchis viverini infections can be confirmed by detecting the characteristic eggs in stool samples. The eggs are operculated, similar to fasciola eggs, but smaller in size. The ova of these flukes resemble sesame seeds. Eggs from both species, while very similar looking, can be differentiated by slight differences in their size in the presence of a small abopercular knob. Clonorchis eggs are slightly larger than opistorchis eggs and have a more distinct operculum. However, speaking based on experience, it is almost impossible and highly impractical to differentiate between the ova of clonorchis and opistorchis. Additionally, eggs of some intestinal flukes, like the heterophids, look very similar to eggs of clonorchis and opistorchis. Serologic testing, including intradermal tests, indirect hemagglutination assay or IHA, indirect ELISA, and western blotting are becoming increasingly important for diagnosing active infections, especially in regions where stool microscopy is less reliable. These tests can detect specific antibodies or antigens associated with the parasite. The identification of these flukes have been aided by more refined molecular techniques which are now routinely used in some research settings to differentiate species with higher accuracy. PCR-based diagnostics have greatly improved the sensitivity of detecting these infections, especially in cases of low egg counts or chronic infections where eggs may not be easily found in stool. PCR techniques can also differentiate between clonorchis and even the different species of opistorchis. Recently, point-of-care tests such as the ICT or immunochromatographic test have also been introduced. 
utilizing excretory secretory antigens from the parasites. These rapid tests offer a quick and cost-effective method for diagnosing in resource-limited settings. The first-line treatment for clonorchis and obistorchis infections is praziquantel, which is effective against adult flukes. Although praziquantel is the drug of choice, albendazole has also been used as an alternative, particularly in cases of praziquantel resistance in some areas. However, take note that these drugs will not prevent the onset or reverse the periductal fibrosis and eventual cholangiocarcinoma. Preventing clonorchis and epistorchis infection involves strategies aimed at reducing exposure to contaminated freshwater fish. Key measures include avoiding the consumption of raw or undercooked fish, proper washing and cooking of freshwater fish, which also includes proper preparation of fish before cooking, improved sanitation to prevent contamination of freshwater resources. The One Health approach is being applied to control liver fluke infections, where efforts to control the disease in humans, animals, and the environment are integrated. This includes snail control in freshwater environments and education about the risks of consuming raw fish. Additionally, mass deworming campaigns are being conducted in some endemic regions to reduce the prevalence of infections, particularly in high-risk populations. On a positive note for Thailand, the prevalence of opistorchiasis has been decreasing for the past half a century, from about 63% in 1957 to around 8% in 2009. This is mainly due to the liver flu control program which was started in the country in 1984 and has three main strategies. Number one, active detection and treatment of infected cases to reduce human host reservoirs. Number two, health education focusing on promotion of consumption of cooked fish to prevent infections. And number three, improvement of defecation structures to interrupt disease transmission. Vaccination research for Clonorchis sinensis and Apistorchis viverini is still in early stages, but promising candidates are under investigation with a focus on antigens related to excretion, secretion, and tegument proteins by the parasites. And that's it for Clonorchis and Opistorchis. Thanks for watching.